The Venture X card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits. Perfect for seeing Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. Presented by Capital One. Oh, I do love her. Earn five times miles on flights and ten times miles on hotels through Capital One Travel. Enjoy your stay in Suite 13. Whoa, 13? That's Taylor's lucky number. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. 92% of households that start the year with Peloton are still active a year later. All because of a fancy bike? It's not just a bike. Peloton makes treadmills, too. Eh, all treadmills are the same. Our treadmills can adjust speed and incline automatically, so you never break your stride. Whether you're squeezing in a power walk or training for a marathon, Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try the Peloton Tread risk-free with the 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Eric Show Podcast. Daily show where I discuss news nonsense and my personal adventures each and every day of the work week. Thank you so much for joining me in the Baldwin Ace Hardware Fear Bunker Studio, Baldwin Ace Hardware, a beacon of DIY awesomeness in the Northland. As we inch our way to show number 1000, oh my God. And look, I know that there's like, oh man, uh, let's uh, throw a party. Ah, please don't, please don't. That'll kind of get me off of my routine. No big deal. I think the ideal thing is just go, hey, it's a thousand. Woo! And then let's talk some shit. Have some fun. There we go. Proud of it, sure, but not, let, let's not make a big deal about it. It's no biggie. Uh, okay. So, a mystery has been solved. Looking back on this mystery, I can't believe I didn't know what happened right away. I woke up yesterday, and I didn't mention this, but uh, the night before, <coughs> we had a, uh, I cooked up a bunch of uh, crispy chicken. You know, it's great because... Uh, you take the uh, flour and you put, oh man, well, first of all, it's a lot of flour. It's like two, three cups of flour. And then I'm adding Lowry seasoned salt, all sorts of Italian seasoning, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, cayenne pepper. So it's just a slight bit of heat, a hint of heat. And this is what, when you dredge the chicken breast, which are, okay, so you get the big fucking thick chicken breast that Meyer, you, you cut them sideways, you like butterfly them, but cut it all the way through. So now you, uh, you have a thinner piece of meat. You dip it in egg that's all, you know, whipped up. And then you dredge it, put it back in the egg. Put it back in the flour. Put it in the oil. Hot as hell. Perfect. Makes the best chicken sandwiches. People are like, what's the recipe? It's like, uh, flour and a bunch of spices. This is not rocket science. The key, though, is don't have that oil too hot. Because then the outside gets too cooked and the inside's not done yet. You're going to end up getting salmonella. Serve it up. Everybody loves it. It's awesome. I let, okay. These two cast iron pans. Big. You can fry all the shit in there. I wake up the next day and the one on the stove top has considerably less oil in it than when I went to bed and say, well, Jesus, why didn't you clean the shit up? Ah, you know, 
It's kind of like when you when you drink all night with your friends and you leave all the shit out and then you wake up and you got to clean it up. It's like that at my house, but more with food. Fuck it. Fuck it. We actually did most of the dishes, but those with the oil, you got to pour the oil into like a Ziploc and then cl- uh, close it, seal it, and then just put it in the garbage can outside. At least that's how we get rid of it. And uh, we didn't have any of those big gallon bags to do it. We ran out. So I'm like, ah, fuck, I'll figure something out later. Don't even worry about it. I wake up yesterday. and uh, I go in there and uh, there's considerably less oil. I'm like, oh, man. Well, the cats, uh, I didn't realize that that's their thing. Doesn't make sense. And. And, uh, they, this is going to be a problem because a lot of the oil, there's very little oil left. There was much more oil in there. Yesterday was also weird because, um, there was a pile of crap in the NFK sunroom. Hair, you got any of those baggies? There's some poo poo in there. Oh, now. I looked at the pile and I'm like, that's an O'Neill. But some of the poo poo has been cleaned up by a dog. And O'Neill does not eat his own cooking. Daisy wouldn't do that. So what the hell happened here? Another layer to the mystery. I realize this is all very, very gross. It's going to get worse. I'm just warning you. This is going to get worse. I noticed that when I let them all out, O'Neill is in one area of the yard and you know, it's very common for him to try to find frozen turds. So I'm like, no, no, no. I get him inside. And then Daisy goes to the same area and she's investigating. And I'm like, well, Daisy doesn't eat shit. What the hell is going on? And uh, I I bring her in, and uh, sure enough, she actually was. I'm like, well, this is this is a new wrinkle. The dog, fucking nine years old. What has? How could this possibly have changed? What happened? Okay, so this is all very gross evidence, but uh, it all I'm all go I'm going somewhere because the mystery was eventually solved. I take them all for a walk. O'Neill has to take a dump and it it's a catastrophe. All right. It's at this moment when it looks like a slurpy machine, a Coke slurpy flying out of his asshole that I realized, Oh fuck. Of course. O'Neill was the one eating the grease. He's a tall dog. He's long. That fucker got up on his hind legs and ate an entire a pan of grease. And now, and it, okay. And then he took a shit in the sunroom. And since the shit was seasoned with my special oil spice blend, it made the shit delicious to even Daisy. And then when they were out in the yard, Daisy was like, oh good, more. I really like this shit eating thing. So you see what happened there? This is fucking horrible. And I'm like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? Of course he got up on his hind leg. Why did I think the cats had something to do with it? He does that shit all the time. You have to keep everything off of the edge of whatever it may be. Countertop, the island, uh, the, the stovetop. How the fuck I miss that? I don't know. So that was rough. Um, so then I'm just, I wake up this morning. I'm like, all right, let's go. It's going to be another disaster. But he didn't. I think he got it out of his system. It was terrible. Holy shit. God. Pretty much par for the course. As a pet owner. Uh, Maureen says breakfast on hold. LOL. My God. 
Uh, welcome in. So glad you're all here. What a day. It is butt freaking cold. Three. It's three degrees. This is like, oh shit, cold right now. Cole suggests just have those two dogs eat each other's shit over and over, less dog food to buy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, already, folks are deciding they are going to Bosco's today to be in the presence of the world's number one kitchen assistant, your old pal, Eric Zane. Yes, that's right. Doug and I will be uh, doing our thing. Sarah says, yes, I'm going with Brad. Oh, I can't wait to see you. Cannot wait to see you. Jesse says, breakfast on hold. I was literally taking a bite of my uh, sandwich when Zane dropped. The Coca-Cola came flying out of his asshole. My God. Patrick Parker is here. Or Parker Patrick. You pick. He's the dude at the gym that I see from time to time. And his dad. And uh, I can never get his name straight. It's all right. It's always Parker Patrick Patrick Parker. I'm pretty sure it's Patrick. But I've called him Parker a hundred times. Your dad embarrassed the shit out of me yesterday, Parker Patrick. And it's because, coincidentally, I couldn't remember someone's name. There's this dude at the gym. We can never uh, get it right. And uh, me and your dad and Brian there, who you know, are always like, God, what the fuck is that guy's name? Well, I saw Brian and your dad talking to him. So then they walked away. And I followed him. I go, hey, you guys are just talking to dude. What's his name? And they go, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Javon. I go, oh, are you sure? Yes. I go, come on, don't fuck with me. And your dad goes, oh, yeah, it's here. Follow me. And we go walking over to Javon. And I'm like, oh, don't do this. Don't embarrass. Are you going to embarrass me? Please don't embarrass me. I walk up, trusting your dad that he wouldn't embarrass me. He goes, hey, Javon. Guy's got his headphones on. Takes him. Yeah, what's up? He goes, hey, uh, so I know you're such a good guy. That doesn't matter if Eric forgets your name one time or ten times. Uh, You're always going to be sweet and kind to him uh, when he forgets that your name is Javon. Isn't that right, Eric? And I'm like, yeah. Hey, Javon. I go, I thought you weren't going to embarrass me. And he goes, you'll never forget now. <laughs> You're right. I won't. Fuck me. Damn it. Uh, Maureen. Oh, Jesus. Maureen is says, uh, I don't see Marcy here this morning yet. Marcy from the world famous uh, group formerly known as the Zaniacs. Uh, waddled into the chat yesterday and uh, was lurking, enjoying this live stream. That's cool. Cannot resist. They they're all back. They've all come back. They all signed up for Patreon. They're all they're all here. No, they didn't. I'm totally shitting here. Um, all right. Corey says, Marcy is an old lady name. It is? I don't know about that. Uh, But uh, various folks are keeping an eye out uh, for that bunch. All right. So welcome to the show. So glad you are here. That is the mystery of the missing Greece. Now, uh, for the audience that are getting the show on Twitch, you stay right there, of course. You don't have to worry about anything. For the folks enjoying the show, Facebook.com slash Eric Zane fan page, Twitter at Eric Zane show, or on YouTube, Eric Zane show. I got to kick you out. That's it. 
Hope you enjoyed this little free view. Uh, the rest of the show is on Twitch. Twitch doesn't cost you anything. Literally, it's as simple as downloading the Twitch app. And after you download it, search Eric Zane Live. All one word. There I am. Hit follow. That's it. Did you get that? Twitch app. Search Eric Zane Live. All one word. Hit follow. That way you'll get a notification. Eric Zane is live. You hit it. You enjoy the show uninterrupted when you're on Twitch, there's video on demand as well. So when the show is done, you can watch it whenever you want. The audio podcast of course is available wherever you download shows, including iHeart, Apple podcast, Spotify, uh, cast box, stitcher, all of them, all of them, whatever it is, I'm on it. And keep in mind, if you ever want to reach out to me, do it the old-fashioned way. Send me an email, eric at ericzaneshow.com. Always love talking to people. Every so often, I'll I'll get someone. Oh, I had no idea that you've been doing this for the past four years. Sure. I'd love to think that everybody pays attention, but uh, that's not the way it is. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. So for you folks that are getting the show, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, I must say goodbye to you, but you have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay. There you go. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's auto repair, Grand Rapids hybrid and EV. Twitter brought to you by blue frost it and YouTube brought to you by no one as of right now. Thank you so much for being here. Follow up to the football over the weekend. I missed this. I wish I hadn't. I wish I uh, had it ready to go yesterday. But we talked about uh, in that play late in the game between Kansas City and Cincinnati. That the dude was chasing Patrick Mahomes. And Mahomes is out of bounds. And the dude pushed him. And he Mahomes goes flying. And then the guy who pushed him, he ended up hurting his knee. And so they throw a flag, 15 extra yards. That puts them in field goal range. Oh, my God. Field goal wins a game. That guy, that uh, dude is Joseph Osai. I think he's a rookie. And he... uh. Uh, sat on the sidelines crying for like ever. And the camera was zooming in on his face. You could, I mean, Jesus Christ, it was, it was, it was brutal. It really captured the moment. So, you know, it made for great TV because you got uh, Kansas City Chiefs are losing their mind and Travis Kelsey screaming shit. And this dude is on the sidelines. Uh, 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 wanting to uh, leave the stadium and throw himself in front of a bus. It was really, it was really that whole thrill of victory, agony of defeat. It was wow. Now the coach of the Bengals, uh, I don't know his name. I forget. He he's like, oh yeah, you know, um, we 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 can't blame him. You know, there's there's a lot of reasons why we lost. Now he's being nice. He's lying there. It absolutely was the guy's fault. Let's not uh, let's not go easy on him and, and lie to his face. He knows he lost the game for them. And there's going to be someone who does that. That's why you play football. I mean, you got to, it's a, it's a, you take the good with the bad. Isn't that the part of the theme to the, old school TV show facts of life. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both. And there you have the facts of life. So if you, you know, make the big play and you celebrate, you know, in the blink of an eye, you can be a total shithead. And that's what Joseph uh, Osai did. Now, after you calm down, people like, ah, you know, Of course, you let him off the hook. He's human. There's no mistaking. He fucked up everything for the Bengals. 
and he knows it. But what you don't expect to see is the teammate throwing him under the bus as he's walking back into the locker room. Jermaine Pratt, veteran linebacker for Cincinnati. Audio check, video check. So he's got to be one of these dudes uh, walking into the locker room here. This is what he was saying. Now he's really agitated, so it's hard to understand what he's saying. But I, I can pair, I can, I can translate. I, I, uh, I'm gonna translate. Angry black, angry black guy to English. Oh, I don't know what that is. This is here. I heard a motherfucker in there. The fuck? Why the fuck? I heard the fuck. The fuck? Why the fuck? Why the fuck? Why the fuck? The fuck. I think the fuck means what the fuck? Why the fuck did you touch the quarterback? All right, go. Shit. Fuck. I hate it when this happens. I swear it's not my fault. God damn it. Come on now. Stay with me here. Uh, everything is fucked. Now everything is totally fucked. Jesus Christ. Oh, not good. Okay, so if you have that type of attack on a guy, Jesus, what the fuck? Why the fuck did you touch a quarterback? I don't, you know, just like I'm not going to forget Javon's name. uh, I don't think that uh, uh, Joseph Osai is ever going to get called for that penalty ever again. They cornered this guy, Jermaine Pratt. Like, um, later on, it might have, yeah, I, I, this was published Monday, yesterday at 6.30 p.m. This is what the same guy who was screaming uh, said. And I and I like this because he's really honest. I was emotional. I was in the... He sounds like a totally different dude. He sounded like he was some kind of a, a, a psychopathic killer in the first clip and in this one he sounds like fucking mike tyson i was emotional i was in the moment i was wrong i would say i was wrong as a man you can look at yourself in the mirror and say i was wrong i wasn't a great teammate at that moment but they don't define me as a man you know but it is what it is 24 hours i'm going back to work i got a great off season ahead with my kids and family that's all that matters at the end of the day when i go home to my kids they love me i go home to my fiance they love me that's all that matters joseph osai may not love you (laughs) all the other stuff is relevant (laughs) this i love this guy that's owning it by the way yeah i was wrong i wasn't a good teammate i was emotional i was in the moment i was wrong I would say I was wrong. As a man, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I was wrong. I wasn't a great teammate at that moment. I wish he would have said I was wrong, but at the time, it sure felt right, you know, because he just uh, cost us a chance to go to the fucking Super Bowl. But they don't define me as a man, you know, but it is what it is. 24 hours. I'm going back to work. I got a great (laughs) off season ahead with my kids and family. That's all that matters at the end of the day. When I go home to my kids, they love me. I go home to my fiance, they love me. That's all that matters. So. All the other stuff is relevant. Back to work. Back to work. All right. I love that. That's uh, much different than when. Uh... Oh, nothing. This is my last year. The fuck? Why the fuck did you cut the corner back? Why the fuck did you touch the quarterback? My God. Uh, the dude, Joseph Osai, he, um, he spoke too. Cincinnati Bengals players and coaches gave defensive end Joseph Osai words of solace and comfort. Well, not that guy. Jermaine Pratt didn't. Uh, 
Osai said it was extremely tough to process the sentiment. With reddened eyes and a soft tone, Osai lamented his penalty in the closing seconds. That uh, allowed Kansas City to be in field goal range, and they won the damn game. Osai is saying all the right things here. He says, I got to learn from experience. Uh, relaying the advice he received from Cincinnati defensive end Sam Hubbard. I got to know not to get close to that quarterback when he's close to that sideline. If it's anything that could possibly cause a penalty in a dire situation like that, I got to do better. All right. So he's owning it. And uh, he, he, at that point, you know, he's saying, yeah, I got great advice from Sam Hubbard. Uh, Nowhere in there is he saying, I also had uh, some nice words of encouragement from Jermaine Pratt. He said to me, the fuck? Why the fuck did you touch a quarterback? Osai said, I was just in full chase mode. I was trying to push him, maybe get him backwards because I knew he was going for that sideline. I was trying to make him go backwards, get that clock running. I haven't seen it yet. I don't know how far out of bounds we were. Um, as we saw yesterday, he also, he landed all wonky. His left knee hyperextended badly. He got an, he's getting an MRI to determine how much damage occurred. So my God, can you imagine if they examined that knee and they said, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's destroyed. And, uh, this is the most devastating knee injury we've ever seen. You will never walk again if on one play he, you know, causes all that shit to happen with the field goal and his legs about, he ends up getting his leg cut off. Jesus. Uh, Bengals coach Zach Taylor, that's his name, was among those who offered encouragement after the game. The coach said, he just told me to keep my head up. Osai said, told me there were a bunch of different plays we had to make that it didn't come down to that one. Now, we all know that's a lie. We all know the coach, you know, wanted to say, what the fuck? Why the fuck did you touch a quarterback? That's what he wanted to say. But instead... He's like, ah, oh, hey, you know, it's okay. It's okay. You're going to be fine. <sighs> wow. Bengals defensive tackle BJ Hill, who flanked Osai as he answered questions from reporters in the locker room after the game, said he had no qualms with Osai on that penalty. That's a lie. I don't have any hard feelings about that play at all because I knew what his intention was just to play hard, Hill said. Now, what he wants to say is, yeah, he's a dumb fuck. That was horrible, and he shouldn't even be on the team. This Osai is one of these guys who he uh, he's right off the boat, okay? He um, came to the U.S. like a decade ago from Nigeria. And uh, right away, you're like, hey, uh, you know, we fuck that soccer shit. Uh, you're big and strong. Uh, you should play football. And he, he kicked ass. Uh, he ended up going to Texas and uh, was drafted in the third round in 2021, but missed the entire season because he suffered an injury in the preseason. So, you know, it's like a rags to riches story. Three, I don't know if he was poor in Nigeria. He might have been rich. I have no idea. Um, but my God. And they were you saying that guy's that guy's name. That guy's that guy's name the whole game with Osai, Osai, he's great. Oh my God, Osai. And then one play kind of wrecked it. Holy shit. Uh one more thing concerning the uh football game. Football games from Sunday. We talked about how Brock Purdy got hurt. Uh, Reggie Bush, former running back, now big mouth, 
after Purdy was injured in that game. In this play right here. Right there. You see how his arm at the elbow kind of torques backwards? It's at that point that his ulnar collateral ligament uh, disintegrates. It ripped right in half. Look at that. Oh, revenge. You just thought about Purdy. Oh, no. But that's the mismatch with Reddick again. Okay. What a vulnerable position for your arm to be in like that. And if you hit it just right, your arm's going to break in half like that. Uh, it, it didn't. It, the bone didn't break. But uh, that ligament there kind of holds it. It connects your uh, uh, your arm, the ul- ulna bone, to uh, the joint which connects to your upper arm. And that's his is destroyed. So there's no throwing the football. It's impossible. It was it was like a noodle. And Reggie Bush was like, oh man, you guys suck it up and play hard. I can't believe I can't believe that you're you're not playing in the big game, you big pussy. Well, um it was it was revealed yesterday that, you know, fucking A, the guy that's it, gone. The the arm is not an arm anymore. It's just like it's it's like uh you know, a fucking just hanging there. They got to repair it, and then it'll be six months before he can play football, even work out. So, my God, what a year for them. Because they lose Garoppolo, and then I forget the backup's name. Is it Trey Lance? And then they end up going to the guy who's the last pick in the draft, and then somehow he gets good. He gets injured in the final in the uh, second to last game, and then the the backup to him, who's played on every team in the league, and no one knows who he is. He ends up getting hurt, and the guy whose arm is now about to fall off has to come back in the game. Incredible, Jesus! So now it's like, boy, maybe we don't get rid of Garoppolo. Maybe I mean because they already said, well, Brock Purdy, he's so damn good, he's going to be a quarterback next year. Well, I don't know, man. Jesus. That is tricky. So, all right. The hype begins for the Super Bowl. Kyler says Jimmy G is gone. Amy says, would you refer to the arm thing as Muppety Floppity? It was potential to be Muppety Floppity. And by the way, we see a lot of Muppety Flippity Floppity crunchity crack a lack of legs like with Joseph Osai he was on the verge of having that happen but uh I don't you know all those things were close to being that but didn't actually happen Malfi Mitten Mama who I'm not sure who that is says that this clip is the new Do You Believe in Miracles? Oh, my God. This motherfucker lands here. The fuck? Why the fuck are you cut the corner back? What the fuck? Why the... F- what the fuck? Why the fuck did you touch the quarterback? God, do I love that. Uh, The idea is being floated now about Tom Brady to the 49ers. You know, I don't know about you, but there's something special about the idea of Tom Brady taking another team to glory. I hope that happens. I really do. The guy's so committed to football, he gave up his family. He gave up his family. And not only a family. I mean, your your kids are, I mean, think about that, your children. But forget about the kids. 
you gave up on one of the world's hottest people on the planet. One of the world's hottest people. You gave up on uh, on her. You blew it. Now, I'm, I'm sure he could. I mean, Tom Brady could trade up. It's possible. But who wants to do that shit? You know, the grass is not always greener. Sure, he could just go bag some 25-year-old hot chick, probably one of the hottest people on the planet. But, I mean, come on. You're 45 years old. Kyler says he needs a Perkins waitress. Corey says he's going to get fresh new tail. Careful what you wish for, though, you know? I mean, he had it made. He had a wife that made more money than him. That's what everybody says, at least, you know? Um, When you're that wealthy, you got to be like, hmm, what are the intentions here? Does this person really love me, or does this person love my money? Kyle makes that point. He says, sure, he could marry some chick half his age with three kids, but that won't end well. I mean, he could marry some some chick. I mean, hypothetical situation. And have that happen. You're right. Corey says, or he could have a lockdown prenup. Now that would be smart. That would be smart. Uh, Jesse says, at least he gave her up to play football and make millions and not play video games all day long and make nothing. Well, that's true. All right. Folks, big things happening on Patreon this week. We will have Ryan sitting in for Ben on Who Are These Zanes? Looking forward to that. Um, I'm still thinking about who are uh, the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Just minus Ben. And I'm not 100% sold on that. I'm still mulling that over in my brain. And I know you're going to be like, well, why not? It's like, eh, you don't want to see inside of my brain as to the process of figuring that out. But anyway, uh, Ben on a trip heading to Florida, uh, tomorrow, but, uh, Patreon every single day, I do another podcast of the work week. I finish this show up and then we go another 30 or 40 every single day of the work week. Uh, also, there's smarter than a former drug dealer trivia. That happens today. Mike is taking on Dale. You have the Insane Asylum you can download, which is a, my two-hour music-driven radio show on Northern Michigan's Q100. You get it, minus the commercials. Uh, Lost Zane recordings, which I forgot to upload yesterday, and I'm reminding myself right now with a note. And uh, then, of course, who are these Zanes in the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast? Try Patreon just one month, five or ten bucks a month. The point of all this was when I started it four years ago, do the free podcast. Put put uh, put your all into it and then uh, politely ask if they'd sign up for Patreon to get more podcasting. If not, that's cool, too. I appreciate you even just thinking about it. Five or ten bucks a month. Try it for one month. Five bucks a month is all the audio. Ten bucks a month, the audio, the video, and the live streams. If you don't like it, cancel it. No big deal. Thank you. I appreciate you trying. But if you like it, sign up for a year, and I will knock 10% off of the cost. There you go. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Okay, it's time to cut through the clutter. With all of the information about online betting, my bookie. That's all you need to know, my bookie. New year, new you. When I say new you, 
I mean, because you're going to my bookie. Give yourself a fresh start with my bookie. Whether you bet to earn, which some people do because they're good at it, or just to have some fun, my bookie gives you the most for your money with their redesigned deposit bonus. Just use promo code Zane on a deposit of 50 bucks or more to receive a cash bonus instantly to your my bookie account try it out my bookie promo code zane using this bonus is simple bet your deposit amount just once and you're ready to cash out it's no strings attached with my bookie promo code zane bet on the nfl ufc play for a share of big cash prizes in the weekly online blackjack tournaments you name it my bookie has you covered with so many brands to choose from you need a platform that makes it simple to bet and win like my bookie promo code zane bet anything anytime anywhere with my bookie okay i feel like i've made it Because every time I turn on whatever podcast, the big famous shows are talking about HelloFresh. Well, guess what? Ladies and gentlemen, I've partnered with HelloFresh. Now, I've experienced this myself, and I'm telling you, it's fantastic. Holy cow. You just pick what you want to eat. The box shows up at your house with everything you need to make an absolutely fantastic meal. How often have I talked with you about how much I love to work in the kitchen and make fantastic meals? But the problem with that is there's a little bit of uh, extra work involved with like the research and then going to the store and then buying all the stuff. And then like uh, life gets in the way and you never make it and everything rots in the fridge and it's all stupid and you hate your life and then you never do it again. And then you eat like a jackass. Well, how about we forget all of that and you just open up your door, walk outside and grab a box filled with particular portions exact sizes of what you need to make some of the best food you will ever have and it's like you're a star because you plate the food and then you pass it off to your family and they're like who are you we had no idea you had the ability to make such great food that's because they specifically tell you the instructions for each of the fantastic meals that you can make with hello fresh oh my gosh i'm telling you this is great so all this time you've been going out you've been eating out you've been spending a ton of cash how about you make gourmet recipes and you do it aha maybe you do it as a process with other members of your family it's so much fun man forget about spending all that money on expensive food make fast fresh amazing recipes with hello fresh My gosh, you got to do this. The box shows up and then off you go. Man, I love HelloFresh. This is what I want you to do. I want you to try it out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Zane21. 21 because that's what I look like. I'm 21. HelloFresh.com slash Zane21 and use the code Zane21. And then you get, you guessed it, 21 free meals plus free shipping. What a deal. If you're listening to me right now and you don't try this, you're crazy. We're giving you free food. HelloFresh.com slash Zane21. Use the code Zane21 and 21 free meals plus free shipping. It, It doesn't get more perfect than this. My gosh, I love you. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay, I love HelloFresh. You will too. Check it out online. HelloFresh.com slash Zane21. Use code Zane21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Go do it. This is the smell of the leftover tuna fish sandwich you left in your lunchbox over the weekend in a wimpy trash bag. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. <sighs> and this is the smell of that same sandwich in a hefty, ultra strong trash bag. Hefty, hefty, hefty. <sighs> Ah, smell the difference? Hefty Ultra Strong has Arm & Hammer with continuous odor control, so no matter what's inside your trash, hmm, you can stay one step ahead of stinky. And for bigger jobs, try the superior strength of Hefty Large Black Bags. The open and live stream of today's show brought to you by the Kent County Health Department. Their WIC program, or the WIC program, is what they want me to promote so that people, maybe someone you know or love, or uh, perhaps it's you, um, No one has to know that, though. Reach out to the Kent County Health Department, accesskent.com slash health, and uh, ask to see if you can start the process of determining if you qualify for WIC, which keeps food on the table 
during a time when it's harder to do that, for God's sake. Uh, Not everybody can just, uh, you know, drop everything and start working double time. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. No judging here, for God's sake. Uh, Check out the website, accesskent.com slash health, and all the information there is spelled out. All literally you have to do is just put in the time to uh, check out the website, call the number, and ask. That's it. If you qualify, you get a card each month loaded with items like uh, bread, milk, cheese, eggs, uh, formula, you know, things to keep yourselves fed. Don't go hungry. Kent County Health Department, they can help you. My friends at Jenison Pool and Spa Depot, Jeremy out the door. Jeremy House wants you to schedule your in-store consultation about getting a pool installed. You've always wanted an in-ground pool. Jeremy has two crews that he's lining up jobs for this summer. Okay? As soon as it's time, he's going to work. Now, if you were to call anybody else who does this for a living, you've got a two-year waiting period. Uh, Jeremy just brought in these two crews to uh, install a number of pools this summer, and he asked me to tell you to get a hold of him if you want more information. So schedule your in-store consultation. Basically, you're going to go to Jenison Pool and Spa Depot for your consultation. Jeremy's going to tell you how it works, what he's going to do. He's going to go to your house after this and look at the lay of the land. Okay, this is a perfect uh, setup here. Yes, we can absolutely do this because there's, you know, this is a very particular thing you're doing here, installing a pool into the ground, either a vinyl liner in-ground pool or all fiberglass in-ground pools. This is what you can do. Uh, How to pay for it? Well, Jeremy will give you all the details when you reach out to him at 616-457-0500. Only one uh, team is installing pools this summer, and that's Jenison Pool and Spa Depot. 616-457-0500. Go ahead, call anybody else. Two-year waiting period, 616-457-0500. He also has an unbelievable uh, showroom uh, size. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me try that again. He also has an unbelievable selection of hot tubs in his showroom right now from uh, the most affordable to the super extravagant. Uh, Go see him at the Jenison Pool and Spa Depot on the south uh, side of Chicago Drive between uh, 8th and 12th. Blue awning, can't miss it. Of course, all your supplies are there too for hot tubs or pools uh, when you need them. Sales and service, if the hot tub that you have breaks or there's a problem with your pool, this is who you call. I've been working with Jeremy for years. He's been helping me um, take care of my pool um, for more than a decade. You'll love him. 616-457-0500. Okay, now, if you remember in November when the quote-unquote red wave was coming, it did not. And the reason why it didn't come is because all of the people that Trump endorsed uh, lost. So there was no red wave, and the Republicans are like, ah, fucking shit. So much so that in the great state of Michigan, um, everything now is Democrat. The governor is a Democrat. The attorney general, Democrat. Uh, Secretary of State uh, office is Democrat. State Senate, Democrat. State House, Democrat. They can do whatever they want. Unbelievable. So, (laughs) Whitmer talked in her state of the state. All right. 
We're going to uh, do some gun control. It's time for some gun control. Okay. Now, she said, I'm not taking anybody's guns. If you have a gun, lawfully, you're going you're gonna to keep your gun, as you should. But I am going to uh, recommend background checks. And uh, I want someone to uh, uh, draw something up and I'll sign it. Background checks. Uh, laws to keep your guns locked up. All right. How do I feel about that? Great. I mean, this. if anyone thinks that this is going to change anything, you're crazy. And if they feel better about it, if they, I don't, I mean, if you're going to do that, you got to go big or you got to go home. You know, if she really wanted it, she should say, all right, there no guns allowed. And then actually go kick in the door, take it. And that's the only way. I mean, this doesn't, and even that's not, that's just going to start a fucking war. Audio check, video check. This is what's up trifecta in state government. Governor Whitmer's three gun safety proposals have a much better chance of becoming the law of the land. The governor wants to mandate universal background checks, safe storage laws, and red flag laws. News 8's Byron Tollefson's been asking lawmakers around the Capitol for their reaction to the ideas and whether they think they'll become law. Byron. Brian, many Republicans I've spoken with don't want to come out with a position because... Many Republicans I've spoken with... The bills haven't even been introduced yet. But once that happens, Democrats don't expect much trouble in passing the gun safety proposal. No, they, they can do whatever they want. Oh, my God. Look at her. She's such a babe. The time for only thoughts and prayers is over. Oh, there you, oh, no. You see, that's going to piss off the red staters. They're like, we all we need is Jesus. Jesus is going to do it for us. He's. You know, all that shit. Whitmer wants three gun safety measures to become Michigan law this year. The people that don't stand here hate that she just said that. Here, And that could happen because Democrats control the House and the Senate. <laughs> Republican <laughs> Representative Luke Meerman of Coopersville, the co-chair of the bipartisan. I don't know how you don't stand and cheer that. I thought that, by the way, this lady in the purple, that's Winnie Brinks. Uh, there was a state uh, representative name Roy Schmidt years ago from this area who did something stupid and Freebear Hot Wings Eric just bashed on that guy for like the longest time and she ran and we were like telling everybody to vote for her even though she had no political experience whatsoever and um, she won and now she's the uh, uh, speaker I think Partisan school safety task force created after the Oxford shooting is against Whitmer's proposals, including mandating Luke Meerman of Coopersville. Because Democrats control the House and the Senate. Republican Representative Luke Meerman of Coopersville, the co-chair of the bipartisan school safety task force created after the Oxford shooting, is against Whitmer's proposals, including mandating universal background checks. Well, why is he in charge of that committee then? Do we see less gun violence? You know, look at New York City, Chicago, uh, even California, some of the most strictest gun control laws we have. Are, are we seeing less gun violence there in California? The answer is, well, I, I don't think so. I think that, that that actually is a pretty good point. Is, that going to, is this going to do anything? Probably not. Um, I would... I would say, unfortunately, the answer is no. Democratic Senator Sean McCann of Kalamazoo says these are common sense solutions. No one should be in a position where they're able to purchase a firearm without being able to clear a background check first. Um, we have guns falling into the hands of wrong pe- of the wrong people right now. The governor's second idea, creating safe storage laws. To pre- I think what they're missing, though, is you can just say a background check. What exactly is the background check? Take me through that. You know, I mean, if you just say, yeah, I got to get a background check. Uh, what's happening there? I think this should be a slow process to do a background check. 
I think it should require some guy who works for the state have a face-to-face interview with you before you, I mean, if you're going to do this, you might as well do it right. You need to be able to sit down with someone and take one look at him, you know, and if he looks like the psychopath, Ethan Crumbly, uh, he was much too young for this, but still, if someone looks like a fucking psychopath and doesn't give you the right answers and alarm bells are going off in your head, whoever's doing the interview should have the ability to say, no, you don't get a gun. Why? Cause you're a psychopath. You know, I think that that's, that is something they should do. Prevent kids from getting their hands on guns in the home. Safe storage adds uh, again, another layer of safety uh, into the equation when you have uh, data. I am breaking the law. If that law is enacted right now, there is no way that I am I am following that to the letter of the law. Dangerous weapons lying around that could fall into the wrong. When my grandkids come over, I have to go around the house and sweep the house to make sure there's no guns laying around. Hands. There is liability out there for gun owners now. You know, if a- By the way, there's no way I'm putting a fucking lock on a gun. Never. Because the point of the gun is to have it ready to shoot someone if they come in the house. The young person gets a hold of that gun. And so telling people to put it in safe gun storage, in my mind, um, doesn't change the picture a lot. Uh, The gun owner themselves are already on the hook if a young person gets a hold of that gun. Um, they'll be charged. In Whitmer's last proposal, red flag laws keeping guns out of the hands of people who are deemed dangerous. It's temporary. It's a court process. There has to be a lot of evidence that someone uh, presents an extreme danger to themselves or to the public. Yeah, you see a lot of these psychopaths do a good job of covering their tracks. They don't seem like psychopaths. Uh, And that's the tool that would be put in the toolbox for our courts to use. And how easy is it for someone to make an accusation and thereby removing you know, lawfully owned guns from someone's house. Um, I sure would want to make sure that that gun. I guarantee you the Zaniacs, the f- group formerly known as Zaniacs, will will say, you got to go get this guy's guns. Owner has some kind of uh, mechanism where they can get back in front of a judge within a matter of days to suggest or or give their side of the story. Instead, Meerman is pushing 14 bills stemming from recommendations by the School Safety Task Force. The measures will be introduced in the House in the next week. I really think we can all kind of come together and say these are important things that we need to come and get done. One proposed change by the task force is already a reality, a school safety and mental health commission. Still to come, they want schools to require more active shooter drills, update their safety plans, and plan more security training for staff. They also want to create two new ISD positions for school safety and student mental health. How can we find those kids and help them uh, before they get to the point of their thinking of committing violence? That's easy. This is something that needs to happen with the schools. I'll, I'll, hold on, I'll save that, actually. McCann expects Whitmer's three proposals to pass, saying Democrats were elected on these ideas, and he'd be surprised if they reverse course now. Other Democrats have told me the same thing. Whitmer does not need any Republican vote. No. They can pass the Senate as long as she doesn't lose more than one Democrat. You see, so there you go. That's yeah, Trump's fault. Girl. Trump fucked that up for all you, Okay. Because all the Michigan voters did was they said, oh, who's, who's Trump supporting? Oh, this guy. Oh, well, we're not voting for that person. Fuck him. You can blame Trump. Holy shit. Uh, Kyler writes, fuck that. Put a National Guard fucker that works once a month at a school with an AR and let teachers teach. I like describing them as... A National Guard fucker. Kevin says, armed guards at every school. It's not that hard. Uh, Bob says, Kyle, because Kyle says, thanks, MAGA scum. Your stupidity is finally paying off. Bob says to Kyle, you still need... You still need to get it transferred by an FFL and a background check done. Okay. All right, this is all interesting to me that this is happening. However, uh, I think that we need to focus on something very, very important. A lot of the times when the kids shoot up the school, 
okay? There's shit going on at home or there's shit going on at school. And then their brains become cooked. And then they're like, ah, it, this is what it's time to do my time to shoot up the school. Okay. So I think that um, if I were in charge of a school, it's so simple to know who's getting bullied in the school. I think a lot of this stems from that. I think that schools need such an overhaul with meticulous paying attention to what's going on. From people in hallways to people in uh, classrooms. When you notice that type of intimidation and bullying is taking place. It needs to be punished. We need to stop this. Uh, Corey says the star quarterback usually doesn't get a bloodlust. No, you're absolutely right. It's always the kid that the star quarterback bullies. And you can see him coming a mile away in the hall. Their heads are down. They have no confidence. They're depressed. They're sad. They're hurt. They probably have a horrible home life. They might be abused in their home. And I don't think, I think there's too much turning a blind eye. It's better now, I think, than it has been in the past. But it's not nearly enough. I think there's a lot going on there that needs to take place. I talked to friends of mine who are teachers. And they see it too. And uh, they say that they actually go out of their way. This is, sounds crazy. But they go out of their way to show extra care to the kid who's experienced what I just described to you. And that is to hopefully have some type of safety net in the event that the kid loses his shit and comes to school with a fucking gun. You know what I mean? Fuck, because if they're like, oh, well, you know, I yeah, but I, I, I love so-and-so. I love Ethan Crumbly didn't shoot me because he loves me. That's That's what teachers are having to deal with. Fuck me. Damn it. Do it. Okay. Now, looking back on this whole proposal, do I think that this, what's happening right now, is going to do anything? Well, uh, probably not, but it in conjunction with uh, an aggressive tactic that I just described uh, to get to the root of the problem, You know, I don't think this will do anything. Uh, uh, Aram asked a nice, a good question. Why does bullying cause these consistent shootings only in the last 20 years? Bullying has been around longer than that. Um, I think that because a part of the problem is uh, the ease at which young people see the effectiveness of a mass killing. You take a young person who has serious mental issues and by picking up their device, they have a tutorial being spelled out to them with great interval about how effective it can be. Because let's let's break it down here. A lot of these mass shootings are because people want revenge. They're pissed off. And they have mental issues. So if you can very easily get that redemption and make people pay, you have that blueprint right in front of you. Uh, back prior to us having the access to we do now, school shootings happened, but not at the frequency that they happen now. It wasn't until the age of information spreading so instantaneously and influencing people uh, around every corner that this started to uh, manifest with more regularity. At least that's what I think. That's just my opinion. And look at Ryan. He says, totally agree. Once again, big fraud Zane solves a crisis. Time to run for public office.
Corey expands on what I said. He said, yep, and now they see past shootings and it gives them the idea. And shootings happened back then too. It just didn't get disseminated that way. It wasn't national news. If it was, you know, you'd have to read about it in a newspaper. If you think back to before all of you were born, um, you would imagine a day where uh, you don't have any access to anything. The only news you get is 24 hours later in an actual newspaper or if you watch the 6 o'clock news. 6 o'clock news, and then at 6.30, they do the national news till 7. And then that's it. You miss it. It's not recorded. You can't watch it again. There's no place to, there's, there is no online. There's no information coming to you from, from all corners. You just don't hear about it because you didn't sit down at six or six 30. As time passed news became a ratings winner. So then newscasts, once the dawning of the internet happened, uh, are then uh, getting longer. 5 p.m. local news, 4 p.m. local news, noon local news, because people want to know. Kenny says, I was bullied as a kid. I never once thought about getting a gun and killing anyone. Imagine that. Well, thank God. Thank God. But not everybody's so lucky. And I think it's for people who um, have that tendency to take whatever they're being bullied as and take it a step further and get their hands on a gun. I think it's more important for people to recognize that, hey, my kid's fucked up. My kid needs some type of intervention or the teacher needs to see it. And you got to you got to you got to embrace this kid. You got to love him up, man. You know, it's it's a systemic issue that uh, is, is, is more of that being the problem. I think this law that is being proposed is like putting a Band-Aid on cancer. It ain't going to do shit. All right. So that's my soapbox. I think I'm one million percent right on all of that. You know what's painful to me? It's painful that I'm always right. It hurts me that I can sit here in a room above my dormer and and make such amazing points. You know? It's because I'm so brilliant. And humble. And incredibly humble. Holy shit, am I humble. There's poo-poo in here, Eric. Hey, Eric, you got one of them bags? There's poo-poo in here. Palate cleanser. Okay, moving on. Uh, Ben Affleck and Jen. Lip readers have figured out the problem in in this incident. They were at some party. There they are, the happy couple. She's not looking too happy. That look on her face is a, what the fuck did you do? I think it was an event where they're promoting a new film that she's in. I don't know. Let's see, where were they? It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. They're They're at an event. And supposedly Jen's giving him the business because she suspects he may have drank some alcohol. And that's a big no, no. This dude's got the thirst, you know, and there's not enough time. This is not in the rear view mirror for fuck's sake. This is never not in the rear view mirror. It just gets a little bit smaller with each passing day. It still haunts my dreams. And that was fucking, I don't know, 26, 27 years ago. 
This dude should still be going to meetings daily and being on complete guard when he goes to an event where there's alcohol. So she's pissed because she thinks that he drank. Now, this dude whose face you see popping in in this TikTok video, he read the lips. He knows what Ben said to Jen. In her hand is a glass. And I, I'm assuming, and a lot of internet sleuths are suggesting that this is the glass that Ben had in his hand. And she took it to drink it to see if there's booze in it. Others have said she's just drinking wine in front of him, which whatever. I mean, my wife drinks in front of me all the time. doesn't matter. Uh, if he, it, you know, some people can do it. Some, some can't, but, uh, the way she's looking at him with this ice glare and taking a sip of the drink here, I'm assuming she's testing it to see if there's booze in it. The voice you're going to hear is the voice of this dude on TikTok who's just uh, reading the lips and saying the words. Ben I didn't drink anything. At the okay. Wedding party. Okay. So watch Ben and then just pretend that that's his voice. Ben I didn't drink anything. At the okay. Gun wedding party. Jen. <laughs> She's giving him the cold shoulder. He goes, Jen. Okay, so let's watch Affleck again. Ben Affleck I didn't drink Jennifer anything. Lopez at the okay. shotgun wedding party. Jen. Ben Affleck. Now let's watch Jen. Look at that look. That look on her face is you motherfucker. Oh my God. I have been on the receiving end of that. And that look on his face right now is like, oh shit, I'm fucked. The hottest woman on the planet is is uh has lasers coming out of her eyes and steam coming out of her ears look at her i didn't drink anything okay. at the okay. gun wedding party <laughs> Jen. Oh. Ben Affle- uh- fuck <laughs> oh shit oh shit oh if i'm him if i'm ben affleck and you, uh, years ago, you were her flame, okay? And then uh, you end up going one direction. She goes another. All sorts of failed relationships for her. Somehow, each year, she manages to get hotter and hotter. Despite well into her 50s. And you, as you continue to be drunk and a fuck face and not getting it for years become more and more ill and unstable. And then somehow, somehow the gods speak and give you the gift of sobriety and you pick up that ball at your rock bottom moment and you run with it. And one day at a time, you're doing it. You're doing it. And oh my God, the hottest woman in the world that used to be your significant other has noticed. And somehow good things happen to those who embrace their flaws and try to fix it. And look at that. It's a fucking miracle. You were dead. And now you did it. She loves you again. You win back the hottest chick on the planet. If I'm you, I basically, before I take even a sip of water, I'm running it up the boss's flagpole. And you must remain vigilant. If I'm Ben Affleck and I go to a party with Jennifer and there's booze everywhere, my arms are crossed, okay? And I'm just standing next to my wife the whole time. I am at her hip because I don't want to do anything that makes the hottest chick on the planet annoyed, okay? Um, 
if she tells me to jump, it's like, how high? You don't, you don't fuck this up. My God. If she says, all right, from now on, you're drinking my piss. I'm like, sounds good. Here, fill her up. Let's do it. That is an incredible, incredible video. Just the look on her face. Um, She's so hot that when she's mad, I'd be so turned on. I would rip every fight with Jen. I'd rip off my pants and start feverishly pounding my pud. 53-year-old Jennifer Lopez, uh, Lopez. Lopez. She looks 25. It was an after party for the Hollywood premiere of her new movie, Shotgun Wedding, on January 18th. Um, a number of TikTok users slammed Lopez, suggesting she had was being unsupportive to Affleck by drinking alcohol. Others said she was just tasting the drink to see if it contained alcohol. We don't know. Affleck, who has talked about his alcoholism, has been to rehab on several occasions. He most recently entered rehab for alcohol addiction in August of 2018 after his wife, Jennifer Garner, Garner staged an intervention. Oh, that's rough. I've never had to do that. I've never had to go to it like an in-treatment thing. I just went, I just you know, did it the old-fashioned way. I didn't just stop. I had help, but uh, 12-step program. Uh, the screen star first entered a rehab facility in 01. In March of 17, he did it again. I have completed treatment for alcohol addiction, something I've dealt with in the past and will continue to confront. He wrote, I want to live life to the fullest and be the best father I can be. The father of three then added, I want my kids to know there's no shame in getting help when you need it and to be a source of strength for anyone out there who needs help but is afraid to take the first step. See, that's all great. I love that. That's true. But he needs to add, and since I am now married to the hottest woman on the planet, this should be easy for me going forward. Because she's so fucking hot. And she married me because I'm sober. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Don't fuck it up. It's not easy. They've been married since July. And already he's in a public setting saying, I didn't drink. I didn't drink anything. I have never relapsed. Not once. I'm very proud of that. But to this day, There have been several moments where I thought I did. I thought I did because I dreamt it. And the dreams are so real that I wake up and then it isn't like, oh, it was just a bad dream. Fuck that. It's like it fades. And then like months later, I'm like, wait. Was that real or was it not? I shit you not. It's ridiculous. It's haunting. Ah. Kyler writes, good for people that can quit, but fuck that. (laughs) I've been happy to leave liquor behind most days, but I'm going to keep my beer. And you should, God damn it. By the way, Kyler, do you remember at the uh, Griffins game when you almost got thrown out for your extreme use of profanity. I was reminded that before the game starts, there's a video that plays. And in that video, various members of the Griffins front office, including me, I'm in this video where I say, have a good time, but don't be that guy. I'm talking about you in that video because moments earlier, 
Uh, team president Matt Gortzma says, uh, don't throw anything on the ice and please use, do not use profane language. Uh, don't have uh, no crude behavior, no profane language, or you will be asked to leave the facility. So if you lift up, if a chick lifts up her shirts, will you too impress his titties on the glass? That's crude behavior. You're going to be asked to leave. If you swear like an asshole, like you are, you're going to be asked to leave. So you, you clearly weren't there for that. I don't, I think you would have uh, just not listened to it anyway, because you're stubborn, but yeah, you would have been breaking the rules. You can't do that, Kyler. What the fuck? All right. So, uh, Affleck, get it together. There's some thoughts. Uh, Amy says she's hot, but she's loco. How how the fuck can you say that? You have never interacted with her ever. You've only seen her on TV. You don't know. Uh, Let's see. Chris says she's probably a colossal pain in the ass. That's okay. That is okay. My job would be... Okay. Affleck's absolutely, infinitely wealthy. He could never work another day in his life, and it's, you know, whatever. He doesn't worry about things that you and I worry about. When people like that have all the money in the world and no reason to stress about the stuff that you and I stress over, they create problems. They don't have the frame of mind where they can, you know, uh, actually live and enjoy life. So they have to make drama happen over the stupidest things. So that's what Affleck is doing. He loses sight of the big picture. Married to the hottest woman on the planet, all the money in the world, all you have to do is keep her happy and have sex with her. That's all you have. That's your job. Ask yourself this question, you dumb fuck. Is it going to make Jen happy? And if you can answer no, don't do it, you fucking idiot. How hard is it? (coughs) Excuse me. That's how I stay married. I'm married to the hottest woman on the planet. Is this going to make Pooh Bear happy? Yes or no? Not everybody gets a Pooh Bear, guys. And if I lost my Pooh Bear... I don't know where I'd be. I mean, seriously. Um, 19, I've been, I haven't dated since 1989. That's when I met my Pooh Bear. That is a long fucking time. Every day, it's all about making Pooh Bear happy. If I lose Pooh Bear points, that is a problem. We just can't have it. Florida man 814 says, I was one at the time. (laughs) You were one when I met my Pooh Bear. All right. Enough bragging. Enough bragging. (laughs) Kyler says... That's why I had to stop drinking liquor. Tracy had enough. However, if I wasn't getting wasted on Tuesday nights, let's go! Would have never been born. Nice boobs, Kyler. Let's go! That's an old clip. I don't even think I have that. Thanks to Blue Frost IT for being on board with this show. The managed IT service provider. This is great. Okay, so you have a small or medium-sized business. You want to upgrade the tech. You're like, uh, I don't even know where to begin. I don't know what to buy. Uh, sit down for a 30-minute complimentary consultation with Blue Frost IT. Alan from Blue Frost IT. 
will assess the needs of your business and make a recommendation about what you should do for your business, what you should buy. Okay. That's all free. Then you go, you drop your money down. He helps you with your purchase. Then he's going to set it all up. That's called project work. Set all that stuff up. Make sure it's running the way it should be. Perfect. Pristine. In fact, if he needs to retrofit your office, he'll cut the holes in the walls, drop the lines in, put the, uh, you know, the plug in shit and the plate covers on it for your internet and ethernet and cable, whatever the fuck. When that's all done, he becomes your managed it service provider for your business. So you then have an it department. You give him a few bucks each month. You're good to go. That's how Blue Frost IT came to be the number one uh, tech team in all of Michigan. BlueFrostIT.com, 616-200-8550. That number again, 616-200-8550. Please mention me. Thank you to Sarah Honda Granville, S-E-R-R-A, HondaGranville.com. Great team over there, Michigan's number one volume dealer for Honda vehicles. And boy, Honda vehicles run forever. Uh, they're making the full court press about the new 2023 Honda Pilot. It is uh, completely redone, brand new, uh, more of a badass now than a, hey, uh, let's uh, uh, pack the family in and go get some groceries. It's fucking sweet. Sarah, Sarah Honda Granville. Check them out at sarahhondagranville.com. Uh, march in there. Drop my name and say Eric Zane from the Eric Zane Show podcast sent me to test drive a new pilot or whatever you want to test drive. Then you're going to sit down with one of the amazing people there and talk about what you want on the vehicle. And then two weeks later, your vehicle shows up and you're good to go. That's how it works. That's the way people buy cars these days. They do have a massive lot, Michigan's largest, of certified pre-owned vehicles, though. So a certified pre-owned vehicle is like new, not a lot of miles, uh, maybe a year or two old, with a warranty. They still have the new car smell. Sarah Honda Granville on Kennewa, just north of 44th, next to the Cracker Barrel. Can't miss them. Drop by. Say hello. What do you say we go around the radio? Sounds like a plan. All right. Sleep levels run low. Mom's Bloom is a nonprofit stepping up to meet the need for postpartum support in West Michigan. Oh, thank sending God. Sending trained volunteers to the homes yep. of families with newborns. Postpartum support. You're Mom's damn right, man. You never. Did you hear about that lady who um, she was in like postpartum psychosis and she had like three kids just the other day? It wasn't. It wasn't long. And she wasted everybody. Everybody's dead. Then she, I think she tried to kill herself and failed at that. So holy fuck. And it's the type of thing where. Uh, they like analyze it. They go, she's not going to know she even did it. Music from Sophia McIntosh. Sophia McIntosh set me free. E- a physiology about um, hormones yes. and what they what they actually do. Yes, how are they? Well, how are they uh, we got a lot of girl talk yes. going on here. Sure. Well, these hormones known as androgens, they really um, can, uh, when they're at a, a higher level in our body, they can really trigger the release of more sebum within our pores. And sebum, sebum is the oil within our pores. And then when that oil kind of collects in that area, it is the perfect home for bacteria oh. that want to live. So there are bacteria that live on our skin, and they kind of find this area with this nice warm oil and dead skin cells, and this is all food and, and comfort for them, and that's when they like to grow. And, is this rosacea? And kind of are they describing rosacea? You get those red pimples or those pustules. Oh, no. So really that's oh, this the process is just fucking of, gross. Um, of a pimple forming, and they get really red, actually, because your, uh. our body has an inflammatory. Reasons that suffering has value. Did you ever have a pimple that was so big? That when you squeeze it, it actually makes a noise. Like you hear an audible. 
tick, tick, tick. It like when it's the sound of the eruption. Like on a microscopic level, it would have been like uh, Mount Vesuvius. That same pain is inexpressible. It feels like a warm blanket being draped around your soul. But in order for someone to say those powerful words, Uh I know just how you feel because there's some heavy duty shit going on on the radio. The same difficult valley first. My husband Ray and I lost our first baby when she was born too premature to survive. It was the most horrible suffering we've ever known. But losing Becky has enabled me to weep with those who. What is going on? There's folks like us sitting here drinking beer, talking God, amen, killing time, living life. Drinking beer, and we're gonna beat some queers. This is uh, naked ladies yeah. on the Q94.5 one week. Now, when I was a kid, we're talking like 10 to 12 years old. Happy Days was was a huge hit TV series. And Fonzie was like the coolest star on TV. I had a Fonzie lunchbox when I was like in fifth or sixth grade. And there was one episode where Fonzie and Richie went on a date with a ah. couple of girls named Laverne and Shirley. Yep. And they were so funny in the episode that they got their own series. And they were so good together, Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams. Cindy Williams passed away a few days ago at the age of 75. Very sad to hear it because... Tuesday nights, man, with Happy Days and Laverne Shirley, they were just ratings, like ratings gold. Yeah, and we were, we had low standards back then. Everybody loved the stupid day. shows I like that. I didn't understand half the adult humor on Laverne and Shirley, but it was still funny. Coming up, we've got music. From That's Apple it. That's Bible. all you got to do. Also 30 seconds, and you're out. And ex-ambassadors next. On uh, I, Cindy Williams, I don't know if she did anything after that show. Force is strong with live music for you. Both here in GR and all around the state. Check out Dropkick Murphy's GLC Live at 20 Monroe, oh, March 12th. really? They're great. Father People John love Misty, them. GLC. Just like Casey did in Soho and Gwen, so I wanted to give you just that. We might even have a special guest or two. This is the chick who talks through her nose. On the iHeart Radio app or wherever you get your No, it podcasts. isn't. No, it isn't. Have you ever had one? A near life? He was cornered and realized she had this no This is the chick who talks through her nose. That's when she pushed her and then struck her with two Slim Jim beef sticks that she was stealing. <laughs> Sam it was Slim Jim, lady. That is not what Macho Man Rage yeah, Savage does. meant. What no, she... I meant that's not what he oh, meant when he oh. said the line. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were like, that's, I sounded dead no, on. No, oh, you were dead God. on. That was a good one. But, yeah, but that wasn't what the commercial was for? <laughs> no, I don't think that's what they were advertising. It's not clear if the Slim Jim's I'm were. I'm talking to your dog, boy. You know, just for the visual if you needed that. But <laughs> that's going to hurt, right? You want, you want nuggets? Yeah, really bad. Uh, unfortunately, the clerk was not injured despite the potential. She sounds like Millhouse. Hey! Them, but at least they're not lethal. Hey, and, Bart! Uh, <laughs> police caught Casey, who admitted to the Slim Jim attack. She was arrested and charged with simple assault and theft. <laughs> Do you think that they, they had to collect the, the Slim Jims as evidence? Like, is that sitting in a. Oh, fuck. Right that now? show what do they sucks. Do when they're dick. Done? How do they just pull it? Dead man's hill and just slid on the damn thing. We were so stupid. Oh, my God. And now you're, you kids are in bubble wrap, you damn kids. Freedom! I mean, but I think can't do it. Dollars of chicken. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, that is, I, mean, I don't know what the, you know. Retail, uh, Nothing's coming in right. good today. You know that was one of those things where when they were catching her, people were like, now, Vera? She's a nice old lady. Vera yeah. wouldn't do that. A lot of static like going they didn't on. Believe it. I think there's something wrong with the radio. Like a baby, Let's go pro and make a... But village manager Christine Burns tells what... This isn't shit. A lot of noise. What a fucking catastrophe. <sighs> oh, well. What the hell am I? I don't even know what's going on.
Oh, my God. Um, did you? Okay, there's a story going around about some kid in, from Bangladesh. And uh, they it was at a... Um, Somewhere that him and his buddies, they were playing like uh, hide and go seek. And uh, now I always hated that because if you hid too well, you know, you're like, hey, should I like, uh, maybe I should like get out and go see everybody because I'm bored. I've been here like forever. And uh, I, I, I want to go do something else. I've been hiding here for like half an hour. What the fuck is going on, you know? And uh, that's what happened, except the kid didn't come out of his hiding spot, and he fell asleep. And the next thing he know he knew, well, next thing he knows, um, well, he notices that the shipping container is moving. He went into a shipping container, and it was at a spot near a port where, like, the crane's going to grab the shipping container and put it, like, on a ship. And... The empty container with the... He locked himself in the fucking shipping container. His name is Fahim. Playing hide-and-go-seek, 15 years old, in the port city of Chittagong, Bangladesh. On January 11th. Went inside the shipping container, and for some reason he fell asleep. He wakes up, the thing's in the crane. He's like, hey, let me out, motherfucker. Oh, my God. His mom and dad are like, where is he? Where is he? What the fuck? I told him to come home. His streetlight's on. He's not come home. My God. Where are you? And he's gone. And uh, so they think he's been abducted. He's in the slave trade. You know, his asshole's the size of a coffee can. They're like, what the fuck is going on? No. He's uh, he's in the thing. Uh. Then on January 17th, it shows up in Malaysia. And uh, they the crane picks it up. All right, yeah, we're going to fill this stuff up with more women to traffic. They open it up, and Fahim's in there. He's like, oh, thank God. I'm so glad to see you. Now, I don't know how we survive, frankly, uh, without water. Can you? How long can you live without water? Isn't it like a day or two? You live without water. About three days. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he had a water source. The boy was just believed to have entered the container, fell asleep, and found himself here. Malaysian Home Minister Datuk Seri Saifuddin Nasushin. This is his name. Minister Datuk Seri Saifuddin Nasushin Ishmael, he said, according to the uh, Malaysian news agency Bernama, who was the only one found in the container. A police report was lodged as he was having a fever. Uh, Fahim was disoriented and confused after going six days without food or water. He was seen taken away, being taken away on a stretcher. Ishmael said the boy received medical attention and that authorities are in the process of repatriating him through the legal channel. Oh, my God. Officials were uh, initially concerned. Fahim ended up 2,300 miles from his home country after being a victim of human trafficking, but an investigation determined he went into the container because of playing, he was playing hide and seek. The relevant authorities have investigated the case. No investigations, and their investigations found no elements of human trafficking. My God. The comments, this guy says, I guess he won. Another comment. Hide and reek. Fuck. You know, every time I read funny things from the comments, I'm like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? Boy, he's the greatest player. I would have never thought about looking in another country for him. 
Uh, this person writes, three days is normally the maximum you can go without water. However, end-of-life patients have been observed as by going as much as five to six days without water. So this kid was either very lucky or there's more to this story than we're being told. Um, yeah, I guess there's a chance he could be making up a story. Maybe someone locked him in there and uh, said, if you say anything, we're going to kill you or we're, we'll kill your parents or your family or something like that. But maybe it's just easier for him to say, yeah, it's totally fine, man. I was playing hide and go seek. Jesus. Bob says, no fair. He went out of bounds. He took water with him, Kenny suggests. He wanted to run away, maybe. Corey says he drank his piss, confirmed. Yeah, I don't think that works. Corey's got it down. He's in kind of like a, a... Corey lives in rough country. Three weeks, no food. Three days, no water. Three hours, no shelter. Cole says that, actually. I didn't. I said Corey. Corey adds, you can drink your own pee three times before it's toxic. I don't know about that. How do you know? Well, on Castaway, he drank his pee. You know, if you can master... Um, the process of distilling, I think you can uh, extract the water from the urine. You need a couple of beakers, though, or flasks. And you heat it up, and then you have the cork in it with those glass tubes, and it goes over, and then it drips into the other one. Then you're going to get the water, and then all of the salts stay in the first one. That's kind of crazy, though. Speaking of kids in trouble, um, man, this is this is terrible. It's happened in uh, North North Carolina over the weekend. There's like a bull riding event, so all these hicks get together in this place. Which looks, I mean, this this is a dump. Jesus Christ. It makes a deltaplex look like the Taj Mahal. And they're they're having a rodeo. Now, the other day on the huge show, some dude, bull rider, came into the radio show and Bill interviewed him. I wasn't paying attention. But I was like, oh, that's cool. I bet you there's a lot of questions you have for a bull rider. But then I, uh, after this story happened, I was like, well, why, why do we even do this? Why do we, if we live in a world where nowadays, um, like if you go to the circus, a lot of circuses no longer have animals. They do like trapeze shit. Circuses are on the ropes because of the hauling the animals from place to place. It's, it's, uh, it's harmful to them. You know, we live in a different world where... You know, if you want to go see the tiger and the and the lion and the elephant, you can't really see it at a circus anymore because of what they do to those animals. They treat them like shit. Now, I always love it when something great happens, like the tiger eats a guy, you know, gets his revenge, or the uh, uh, elephant goes crazy and starts stomping people that whack him in the knee from time to time. I'm always team animal in that regard. So, no, there, there, there shouldn't be animals at circuses. So, the fact that uh, that's that's happening now, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure which one it was. Might have been Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey. They, they uh, wiped out the animal shit. Um, hell, when I go to zoos, you know, I have to make sure that I have to convince myself and be assured that the animals there are like rescued and uh, can't go out into the wild because they'll die, you know? Um, And thank God they're treated well. But when it comes to like bull riding, that's up there with like, uh, 
you know, in my opinion, that's like bullfighting, which is fucking sick. I mean, the fact that you can go to other spots on the globe and 25,000 people get together and watch the matador taunt this fucking thing and then kill it and runs by and he sticks a sword in it. And then when there's enough swords in it, it's got like 50 fucking swords in it. It's dead. That is unbelievable to me that anyone would say, I am so fired up for tonight's bull riding or uh, a bullfighting event. It's disgusting. It's the worst. In this country, we have bull riding. Now, the way they, I'm not, I don't know anything about bull riding, but I'm guessing that those animals would rather not be doing that. Okay. That's, that's terrible. In my opinion, this is bullshit. Sick individuals do this and support this. You're assholes. You're, you're, you're performing an asshole sport. And now there's a kid that's dead. Now, this idiot kid was probably, his parents probably did the same stupid thing, ride bulls. This is almost like North Carolina is a different country. The dead kid, his name was Denim. Uh, let's see, what the fuck? His first name is Denim. That's terrible. Denim Bradshaw. Here he is. There's a GoFundMe for him. Aramass didn't huge have a bull rider on. Have you been preparing food in the last five minutes? I just talked about that. Do you even listen to the show? I just had an entire rant centered around that exact thing. Tell me you're not paying attention while not telling me that you're not paying attention. Aram says, does huge promote bull riding? I just talked about that. (laughs) He says, you definitely can't read. (coughs) I said... He had a bull rider on his show. If that's not promoting bull riding, I don't know what is. You think he had the bull rider on there to browbeat him and tell him he sucks? Context would tell you, dipshit, that yes, he does promote bull riding. And then you ask me, does huge promote bull riding? And then you accuse me of not being able to read. Okay, maybe I can or maybe I can't, but I know one thing. You can't assume anything. Context doesn't fill in the blank in your brain. It doesn't, it doesn't, context doesn't work for you. You're a, you're a black and white guy, Aram. My God. Anyway, just shut up, okay? You're the guy on the show who... I don't know if you've worked to achieve this status, but if you talk, I'm annoyed. You are have worked your way. You have now passed Kenny, which is a miracle. You have passed Kenny in annoyance. The standings are now Amanda 1, Aram 2, Kenny 3. It is official. Now you're going to have to work hard to be one. Because, you know, of all the shit she talks about, chicks hockey, stupid dildos, all that fucking shit. But Kenny has stayed under the radar for long enough. We are seeing a changing of the guard right now. 
Second most annoying audience member at this moment is Aram. Congratulations, Kenny. Congratulations, Aram. My God. Just shut up for a minute. Let me do my fucking job. I'm trying to tell a fucking story. Jesus, fuck. I blame me. I got to stop reading. If it says Aram, don't read it. Eric, for one week, this is me lecturing me, for one month, if it says Aram, go to the next one. Okay. Back to the story. Denim Bradshaw has been groomed for this event. This is terribly sad. He gets on the beast. They tie the rope around the beast's balls. That's how they make the thing go crazy. I think. I might not be right on that. So it's a get off of me, get off of me. Let's put a person on the back of the bull. He dropped into the bullpen and got into place to ride. The door, this is his first ride at the rodeo. He's never done it before. He's a professional. So he's a 14-year-old professional bull rider. So he's done it before, but not at the pro level. He's all fired up. All the hillbillies are there cheering. The doors open. The bull, uh, it says bulked. I think that means bucked. Maybe. Twice. Knocking Bradshaw to the floor. The bull then stomped on his chest. And that sent him into cardiac arrest. It's the whole Damar Hamlin thing. That's what happened. First responders were already on the scene to monitor the event and quickly attempted life-saving measures, but he died. Right there. Right there. Oh, my God. Why do you people do this shit, you fucking idiots? Now you got a dead kid. Ugh. Statement reads, uh, everyone here at uh, Rafter K Rodeo Company, LLC, they made sure to put the LLC in there. That means you can't sue us. We have no insurance. Would like to give our sincere condolences to the family and friends of bull rider Denim Bradshaw. Boy, this kid had no chance. His parents named him Denim. Jesus Christ. Our sport is truly a family, and we are so thankful for everyone that was there to help. That should read, our sport is shit, and this was bound to happen. This is a tragic event and words cannot describe the pain felt by this loss. That should say, this is a tragic event that was 100% preventable if this stupid sport didn't exist. We ask everyone to come together and pray for his family for comfort and healing in this time, in this difficult time. It should say, we ask everyone to come together and pray for this family for comfort and for us because the impending lawsuit that's coming. Horrible. If I, um, if I was made president, you know how you like, you can do executive order. Um, I wonder if on my first day, like I could run on the campaign and have all these particular things, the usual things that people are concerned about and then throw in a wild card, like a wheel of crazy shit that I'm going to ban the first day in office and then spin the fucking wheel. And then, you know, it's one of the, something like this rodeo would pop up and I would sign an executive order that says rodeo is now illegal. You cannot have rodeo. Jesus. I would say boxing. Yes. MMA, yes. Rodeo, no. More for the concern for the animals. Sure, the kid's dead, 
But if you weren't abusing animals, this wouldn't happen in the first place, you fucking idiots. My God. The GoFundMe has raised $17,572 of the $15,000 requested. Jesus. I'm sure that's like several years' wages for the people that were at the rodeo. What a catastrophe. Thank you to Tag Accounting. Call upon the tax hobbit, 616-301-9516. Do not do your taxes this year. Just skip it. Reach out to Troy Ginzer, Tag Accounting. He's going to take care of everything for you. You're going to get more money back. You will have no stress. Even if you buy one of the stupid programs, you're still going to spend a day on that. Forget that. Your time is so valuable. Don't do it. Call up Troy Ginzer. Say, Troy, I'm going to give you the 100 bucks. 616-301-9516. You'll get more money back. You'll get more time. And it's done perfectly. Troy has been my accountant for years, or our accountant for years. First for the family. He was also the accountant for the show back in the day. Free Beer and Hot Wings show. I think he still does that, actually. I don't know. I don't ask about it. Uh, but then I, um, I needed him for business, um, accounting too. He takes care of all that stuff for me. So whatever it is, he's got you covered. 616-301-9516. God bless A and E heating and cooling. 616-516-8579. The immortal Joe Martinez. Oh my God. Madre is una puta. Love him so much. Midway through this expensive heating season. Today's a cold one. It's only up to 11 right now. That's going to be working hard, your furnace. Now, if it's working hard and you haven't had it tuned, eh, okay, you're rolling the dice. Once a year, that furnace should be cleaned, tuned, and assessed. Make sure it's in tip-top running order. 616-516-8579. Joe Martinez will help you. 79 bucks to get that furnace tuned up. If you haven't done this in years, okay, Today, call. Today. Set it up today. If you are in need of a new furnace, this is who you call. Call two other people first, two other businesses. I don't care who. Make Joe third. He's going to win your business. His price will be lower. If not, tell him. Say, yeah, these other two guys are more expensive. Eric Zane says you're going to beat the cost. He will. 616-516-8579. Jacob Bennett over at M37 Hackers in Middleville, Michigan. Golf simulation headquarters. Cheaper than X-Golf, more fun, and you're helping out a local sponsor. I love it. Uh, Bring a cooler for you and your buds to hit a few rounds of golf, drink your beers that you brought. They don't have a liquor license yet. So it's like BYOB, it's fucking sweet. 269-205-2095. 269-205-2095. Reach out to M37 Hackers in Middleville and book a tea time. There's also all sorts of tournaments and specials and memberships that they have. They'll go over all that stuff with you so that you can drop in and play for a reduced cost. Um, You know, you get uh, a first right of refusal on any tournaments. And, uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic place to hone your golf skills during the off season. I love the fact that you can uh, hit a ball on whatever course it takes off. You're like, oh, shit, that's a bad slice. I got to fix that. You hit the replay button, and on the screen, you've got a close-up of the club head hitting the ball. Oh, that's what I... I fucked it up. That's right. Okay. It's awesome. M37 Hackers. Call and uh, reserve one of the bays. 269-205-2095. X-Golf's 60 bucks an hour. M37 Hackers, 40 bucks an hour. What? And you get to bring your own beer. Holy shit. Get a group together and go golf. 
Last but not least. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Okay, interest rates are starting to creep down. 231-332-6505. In fact, if you can swing the monthly cost of a 15-year fixed, which is, I mean, that's awesome. If you can pay off your house in 15 years, it's massive. You can get uh, mid fives, maybe a little lower on the interest rate. Now, now, that's cool. All right, if you can swing that. But in a few years, maybe less, you can get that down to uh, three if it keeps continuing to drop. I mean, we were very, very low prior to all the shit hitting the uh, fan with the economy. So <clears throat> still not the best time to get a loan. You can get a 30-year fix for under seven now. Okay? It's been a lot worse. Fuck, in 1980, uh, to get a home, first-time buyer was 18% interest. you believe that? But uh, reach out to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage for anything mortgage-related. First mortgage, 10th mortgage, refi, whatever it is. 231-332-6505. Any state in the U.S., no matter where you're listening, except Hawaii, Alaska, Maine, South Carolina, mention my name. Yesterday's Asshole of the Day, brought to you by TC Paintball, was Marcy. For being a lurker. No more lurking for you, you sow. Sorry. Uh, but today's asshole of the day. Hmm. Yeah, I can't really give Aram the asshole of the day for doing uh, for for going the route that he's going. I think Aram's actually trying harder than Kenny tried. I think he's actually going out of his way. I don't think Kenny. And Amanda, do it, well, maybe Amanda, do it on purpose. I don't think Kenny ever did it on purpose. He just couldn't get out of his own way, you know, one of those deals. But I think Aram is actually, I am going to fuck with Eric today. I am going to go out of my way to get under Eric's skin. I have a feeling. I know what you're doing. You're fucking with me. That's what it is. All right. We talked about the mystery of the missing Greece and how gross that was. Follow up on the AFC championship game with Jermaine Pratt giving all sorts of shit to, uh, what the fuck his name is? Joseph Osai. Brock Purdy is hurt. New gun laws in Michigan that aren't going to do anything. Affleck and Jen. Oh my God. Hide and seek gone wrong. You had Aaron being a pain in the ass. Today's asshole of the day is bull riding. Congratulations, bull riding on being the asshole of the day. That's horrible. The kid's dead because of bull riding. When you combine hillbilly sport with hillbillies, that's what you get. Dead kids. My God. Folks, that is it. The Eric Zane Show podcast is in the books for this. The 31st of January, 2023. Thank you for being part of it. I will talk to you down the road. Thank you. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye. 92% of households that start the year with Peloton are still active a year later. All because of a fancy bike? It's not just a bike. Peloton makes treadmills, too. Eh, all treadmills are the same. Our treadmills can adjust speed and incline automatically, so you never break your stride. Whether you're squeezing in a power walk or training for a marathon, Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try the Peloton Tread risk-free with the 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Thank you for calling Navy Federal Credit Union. How can I help you? Hi, if I'm in the Army, not in the Navy, am I still eligible for membership? Yes, you are. What about my sister in the Air Force? Her too. And my dad's a Marine. We serve all branches of the military, veterans, and their families. My dog is a retired military working dog. I'll see what I can do. 
Find out if you're eligible at NavyFederal.org. Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Insured by NCUA.